We're going to continue our study, our inheritance, the blessing. Let's look at Genesis chapter 1, please. Genesis chapter 1. Genesis chapter 1. Glory to God. Verse 1. In the beginning, the blessed one created the heaven and the earth. And the blessed one said, and the blessed one saw that it was good. Do you know when you receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the blessed one looks at you and says, it is good. The blessed one sees you as good. We might not see ourselves that way or see other people that way, but I want you to know this morning, the blessed one, everything he made, he saw was good. And you're born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible seed. So the blessed one sees you and he says, you're good. Everybody say, the blessed one one. looks at me and sees that I am good, and he declares, I am good. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The glory to God. Now verse 26 of chapter 1, And the blessed one said, Let us make man in our image after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. If there's any creeps in your life, you've got authority over it. Anything that's going to steal, kill, and destroy in your life is a creep, and you have authority over it. Hallelujah. Because we're made in the image and likeness of Almighty God. We're his children. You know, we say we're heirs and joint heirs with Jesus. But you're not an heir with Jesus. You're an heir of God. You're a joint heir with Jesus. But you're an heir of God. There's a difference. You see, my children might be joint heirs, but they're an heir of their father. The grandchildren might be joint heirs. But we are heirs of our heavenly father, and everything he has that he gave to Jesus, he gives to me. It says we're heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And no good thing has he withheld from us. Isn't that wonderful? So if we're made in his image and likeness, and the blessed one said, therefore the blessed children say. Therefore the blessed children say. Verse 28, and the blessed one blessed them, and the blessed one said, be fruitful, multiply and replenish. Have dominion. Say the power that brought the world into existence. The blessing is in me now. Right now. Right now, right now, right now, right now. Hallelujah. We've got to quit looking for something and start declaring what we have and who we are. So we're not natural children, but supernatural. The moment you got born again, you're a supernatural child. We've changed locations. We're to command the blessing. We saw that last week. We command the blessing. We have the divine nature. That divine nature is righteousness. The fruit of righteousness, the result of righteousness, is right standing with God, but our nature is righteousness. And that's another study. So let's look at Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. We started with taking off and putting on. Let's just look at 2 Corinthians 5, 17 a moment. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. And we're going to get to where we started some time ago. 2 Corinthians 5, 17. Hallelujah. Therefore... If any man be in Christ, well, you are in Christ. 
The moment you believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead and confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, you are immediately in Christ. Right, right that moment, you're in Christ. Doesn't take a long time. Don't have to change the way you look or the way you dress. You're in Christ. The moment you believe and speak with your mouth, you're in Christ. So I can say, I am in Christ. Say, I am in Christ. I am in Christ. Therefore... Because I'm in Christ, I'm a new creature. Old things passed away. Behold, all things are new. Now we've looked at that in some detail. What's new is our spirit. And now we have to deal with our soul realm. And as we deal with our soul realm, our physical realm will line up with our soul realm. So it's a life-transforming experience. Because now you are new creatures in Christ. You are not no longer of the devil. With his sin nature, you now have the nature of God, which is righteousness. But that's the part that got born again, and we have to work on the other part. Now, we have the blessing. It's on us. Galatians 3, 13 and 14, it says that... Christ became a curse for us because it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangs on a tree so that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles. The moment we believe and receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, the blessing's on us. The blessing has been conferred and transferred on us. We saw where Jacob transferred that blessing, Abraham transferred that blessing, God transferred it on to Adam, later on to Noah, later on to Abraham. It's transferred and nobody can take it away. Say nobody, 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 nobody. and no thing nobody. can take and the blessing, the blessing off, me. off me. Because when I received Jesus as my Lord and Savior, it was conferred, transferred, put on me. There is only one person that can take it off, and that's God. And that's if you bow your knee to, to, and, and tell him you don't want it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But someone might say, if the blessing's on me, why am I not walking in it? And that's what we're going to look at today. There are blessing blockers. There are blessing blockers, and these blessing blockers are planned by Satan to prevent the blessing to operate in your life even though you have it. These blessing blockers are, one, unforgiveness. Two, self-esteem. And somebody might say self-esteem is good and some people have low self-esteem and some people have high self-esteem and high self-esteem is good but low self-esteem isn't. I looked it up in the dictionary. Here's what self-esteem means. And you tell me if it's good to have self-esteem either high or low. Confidence in one's own worth or abilities. Pride. Dignity, self-regard, faith in one's self, self-confidence. Notice this self-esteem and all the definitions. Most of them have self. And yet we're trying to get people to have some self-esteem. Anything with self is a problem. Because self is selfishness, self is in selfishness. And it's a blessing blocker. You see, we are to walk boldly as children of God. But we're to realize he is our source. And every good thing we have is because of Jesus. Because Jesus became a curse, I have the blessing. But if I am now walking in self esteem, where confidence in my own worth or abilities, I will fall because I've cut out the blessing. I've cut out the power of God. I've cut out who I am in Christ. Now I'm looking to myself 
And when we look to ourself, we can't get beyond ourself. Uh, Terry Copeland Pearson said, the unholy trinity, me, myself, and I. Me, myself, and I. Well, I don't see anything wrong with it. Well, I like it. Well, I want it. Well, I should. Well, I shouldn't. Don't tell me what to do. And then with self, you go to somebody and say, what, your child. You know, it could be whatever your, your, your child goes and hits their sister. And, and did you hit your sister? Yeah, but it's her, her fault because she did this, so now I've got a right to hit her. Says who? Says who? And we grow up with that retaliation idea. And if you've done it to me, I'm going to do it to you or I'm going to cut you out or I'm going to do something. And now I have stopped the blessing because it's all self. Blessing blockers, unforgiveness, self-esteem, condemnation. That works both ways. Myself, I feel condemned or I'm condemning others, which is really condemning others is judging, unforgiveness, etc. Bitterness. We're talking about blessing blockers. Anger. Strife. Lying. Judging. They will all stop the blessing. And this is what we've got to realize. You know, sometimes you see this with children and unfortunately... We see it with adults too, but let's just stay with children because nobody here as an adult would do that. But a child might take a cookie out of the cookie jar. Did you take that cookie? And they go, no. And you let them get away with it because, oh, they're so cute. You've developed a habit. Just because you got away with it once... Let me tell you, it says that God has a book. And in that book, he's written, as we sit and talk together about the things of God, he writes it in his book, and he remembers it. Satan copies everything God does. So therefore, you might think, I've done it, and I've gotten away with it, But let me tell you, Satan's got it in his book. Satan has it in his book. There is a way to get it out of the book. Glory to God. We're not stuck there. We apply the word, the name, and the blood. That's called repentance. It's not called, I'm sorry, and I do it again. I'm sorry does not erase it out of the book. Because when you apply the name and the blood, get the help of the Holy Spirit, you repent and you're not doing it over and over again. We're talking about blessing blockers. Because we know the blessing's on us. But how many of you know people that have the blessing on them and they're walking in the curse? And Proverbs says the curse causeless will not come. As Christians, a curse causeless will not come. Nobody can put the curse on you. Nobody. Zero. Nobody. Nobody can come up to you and speak a curse and have it come on you unless you receive it. Nobody can curse me. They can, but it won't have an effect on me. And nobody can take the blessing from me. And these are blessing blockers. And the blessing is the only thing that is powerful enough to reverse the curse. And the blessing is faith activated. So now let's look at Ephesians chapter 4. Because how many, I know you all do, but just to, 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 it's good to put our words, say, I believe the blessing is on me and I walk in the fullness of the blessing. Hallelujah. So when we see these things, we quickly correct it. Amen? We repent. Ephesians chapter 4. Take off your old clothes and put on the new. We actually looked at that a little bit. Ephesians 4 verse 22. 
that you put off concerning the former conversation or the former way of life, the old man which is corrupt according to deceitful lusts. You were taught to change the way you were living. The person you used to be will ruin you through the desires that deceive you. The old person. The old person will deceive you. We looked at this, verse 23, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. And this is really camping ground. The spirit of your mind, be renewed in the spirit of your mind, is not the same thing that he's talking about in Romans chapter, chapter 12, verse 2, where it says to renew your mind. This is talking about the spirit of your mind. How many of you know, we can sit here and we can go, yeah, sure, by the stripes of Jesus I'm healed, or yeah, I believe, no, 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 no judging, and, and we can quote the word. But if we're not renewed in the spirit of our mind, we will keep doing the same thing. Because the spirit of our mind, we need to get revelation knowledge. And the spirit of our mind is where the word carries more weight than our feelings. The word carries more weight than anything else. We are taught to have a new attitude towards our old things that happen. So we looked at cleaning out the closet and we're to remove items that no longer fit. The first step is identifying what needs to go. And we'll go into that in a minute because verse 24, it goes into that, verse 27, etc. We'll look at that, but we have to remove the items that no longer fit. Well, these blessing blockers no longer fit in our life. Unforgiveness, self-esteem, condemnation, bitterness, anger, strife, lying, judging. They no longer belong in our life. And in order to get rid of them, we need to be renewed in the spirit of our mind because we have to have a different, we have to have an attitude change. Our mind can be renewed and we need to renew it so we know what God's saying. But then we have to have the proper attitude towards what God's saying. We no longer can be favorite word people. Well, I like what God said there, but I don't like that one. So I'm going to take that one, and I will ignore that one, because if I take that one, I'm going to have to do some changing, and I don't want to change that. And you know, often we won't come right out so bluntly and say it, but if we don't change it, we're saying, I don't want to change it. So the first step is to identify what needs to go. Second step, once you know what needs to go and you have declared by faith that you're going for total freedom, as long as we keep on to these blessing blockers, we will never have total freedom. We will have a bit of success here or there. Things might look good, but if we don't get rid of it, Satan will pull a trap. He can bring it on you anytime he wants. And sometimes we're like that frog in a pan of water. We're sitting in this pan of water. They put the frog in and he's just enjoying it and there's the heat under it. And he just is enjoying it so much until the water's boiling and you can now have frog soup. He never jumped out. We can get so comfortable with that old way of life that by the time we realize that Satan has pulled the trap. Now, I'm not talking about going to heaven. If all you want to do is believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, get to heaven and live like the rest of the world and let Satan turn you inside out, get you sick, get you poor, and all the... You can do that. That's all right. If you do not want the blessing and the fullness of the blessing in your life, that's okay. That's okay. But if you do want the fullness of the blessing, these are things we have to deal with. Because in too many people's lives, the blessing isn't working in its fullness. 
Nations are to come to us. The body of Christ is to walk around different than anybody else. You know, it's like a disease. I remember Jerry Seville some time ago. He was talking about it, and he says, you won't get rid of anything until you're fed up. And until you get fed up with the devil messing in your life, you're not going to do anything. And the longer you go little bit by little bit and the water gets warmer and warmer, you may never get fed up. The blessing is there for us. It's on us. Let's not mess around and stop it. Come on, somebody shout amen or something. Like, you know, get excited. You get excited about this even though it doesn't sound really great and it's not a yes, yes. Look at when we get this, we will walk in a place we've never been able to walk before. We won't just sing the devil's under our feet. He will be under our feet. No sickness nor disease will come near us. We will walk in victory every day of our life. And the wealth of the sinner that's stored up for the righteous is going to come running into us. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But let's find out what the word says, what we have to do. Because when we got born again, we still had this stuff in our way of thinking. Amen. So once you know what needs to go and have declared by faith, you're going for total freedom. Make the quality decision regardless of the pain or the cost. You're going to go for it. You're going to go for it. I so believed. I so believed that I was healed. And I totally had my mind renewed, but the spirit in me. I had revelation, and I got to the place I didn't care. I was going to believe God, and if I died, well, glory to God, that's even better. This side is better, but I knew I wouldn't. I knew I wouldn't because I hadn't finished my course. You see, nobody can kill me. I've already died. When I got born again, I died. That old man is dead. You can't kill me. You can't kill me. You can't kill me. Hallelujah. You can't. You can try and hurt me. You can try and bruise me. You can try anything you want, but you can't kill me. And until I lay down my life, you cannot kill me. Why? Because the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead dwells in me, and it quickens my mortal body, making it alive and healthy and whole in Jesus' name. That's an attitude. That's not just head knowledge. That's revelation and it's an attitude. The spirit of my mind has been renewed in it. I had no doubt my children would no longer need glasses. I had no doubt. And all they had to do was put their mouth in line with it and they did and they got it. It was so strong. And that's the blessing. I didn't know it was the blessing. But I believed it. Brent one time phoned, well, the teacher phoned. He ran through a door or something, I don't know. And he got a gash. They phoned, told me how bad it was and that he probably needed stitches. I said, put Brent on the phone. I think he was in grade two. I said, son, do you want to put your hand on it? We don't care who is around. Do you want to put your hand on that? I'll pray you agree, and then you can go on. Or do you want me to come and get you and take you to the hospital? He said, no. He wanted to go out because it was recess. (laughs) It was recess. I mean, if it may have been math. No, he liked math. If it was English, maybe he would have said, yeah, Mom, come and get me. But it was a good time. It was recess. He said, no, I'll put my hand on it. I said, okay. I said, you believe it's healed? When I pray, he goes, yes. He put his hand on it. I prayed. I said, all right, son, what do you say? He didn't care who was around, and he declared it was healed in Jesus' name. The teacher got back on the phone and said, are you going to come and get him? I said, oh, no, we prayed. He's okay. He's healed. She goes, "Um," and now this is in a denominational Christian school. She says, are you sure? I said, oh, yeah, he's fine. So off he went outside to play. By the time he got home, it was just a little line. Glory to God, I don't even know if there's a scar there. No scar. No scar. Hallelujah. The spirit of your mind needs to be renewed. Glory to God. 
Hallelujah. Let's carry on here. But you have to put some stuff off before that's going to work. And if you walk in any of these blessing blockers, it won't work. Because you have to put the word of God first, submit to the word in order to walk in your authority. And by, when we did that with the kids healing, etc., we were walking in our authority because we submitted to the word of God. And anything you see in the word, as you get revelation, as you see it, you are responsible to get that, and you have to submit to that word. You don't submit to it, you won't walk in the blessing on it, it'll be a blessing blocker. Glory to God. Let's, so once you know, get rid of it, put off, picture someone laying something down. Let's look at Colossians, keep your finger in Ephesians, we're going back there. Colossians 3, 8 to 10. Hallelujah. Glory to God. You might say, did that take you very long? It took a long time. But yet it didn't take very long at all. You see, once you make a decision that God's word is final authority in your life, it doesn't take long. It doesn't take long. And you no longer make excuses for wrong behavior. You just do what God tells you to do. Colossians 3, 8 to 10. But now you also put off these. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Do you know filthy communication, of course, it means curse. Cursing, of course. Filthy words, four-letter words. But it also is speaking the curse. Filthy communication is also speaking contrary to the word of God. Filthy communication is when you're gossiping and judging. That's filthy communication. We might get to that and that's very clear in Ephesians chapter 4 as we get down in it. Lie not one to another. Seeing that, seeing, why do you not lie to one another? Because you have put off the old man. You have put it off. You have to deliberately decide to change, to remove, lay aside, declutter. In every other place, and we were reading that in Ephesians 4, and then we went to Colossians 3. The old man is spoken of as having already taken place. Don't carry that old dead man around with you. Put him off. He's dead. Don't keep them hanging around. We're thinking we have two natures. We do not have two natures. If you had two natures, you're a freak. You're schizophrenic. No. We have one nature. God's divine nature. We read that. That's who we are. Glory to God. And that was Peter. First Peter, I think, four. I don't know. I think it's around there. Anyway. It's already done. It's spoken of as having already taken place. The putting off of the old man spoken of that we looked at is turning from the habits and lusts that our old man deposited in us. They're not who we are. People say, well, that's just the way I am. No, you're not. Not if you're born again. That's not who you are. That's not who you are if you're born again. The old man, that turned. So to turn, these things were deposited in us as we lived out there. And now we want to get rid of them. To say I'm sorry won't cut it. And not, you know, you can say you're sorry if you want to say you're sorry to somebody. But if you say you're sorry, make sure there's repentance there. Now what's repentance? Turning. Turning, being renewed in the spirit of your mind. It says in Ephesians 4, to him that stole, steal no more. What's he to do? I'm stealing. I'm not going to steal. I have corrupt communication. I make a decision. I'm not going to do it. What do I do? I get the Holy Spirit to help me to put a watch on my mouth. 
and I don't speak crooked speech. I don't speak opposite of the blessing. And when I do, it's a matter of no, in the name of Jesus, that's not who I am. That's not what I want. The blood of Je- I apply the blood of Jesus to that. I repent. This is what I say. And I speak what the word of God says. If you don't, you won't get rid of that old stuff. Paul qualified his statement when he said he was speaking of our former, and we read that in in the beginning of Ephesians 4. He's speaking of our former manner of conduct, not the old sin nature. Remember, this is our sin nature. We were translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. I was here located in Adam. I am now located in Jesus. My old sin nature is gone. I don't have it. That's not who I am. That's not who I am. That's not who you are. How many want the blessing in its fullness? You know, it, it, it talked about Abraham, and then it talked about Abraham having the blessing in its fullness. And I think that's around Romans chapter 15. There is the fullness of the blessing. The fullness of it. Every aspect. Every, you go through that curse, not one of those curses can come on you without your permission. None. So don't go on living as if that old self was still alive. Ephesians 4.23. Ephesians 4.23. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. You were taught to have a new heart attitude. You're taught to have a new attitude. And again, the spirit here is not designating the Holy Spirit or even the born-again spirit. It is referring to a part of us all. It is speaking of our attitude. How many of you heard, your attitude will determine your altitude? Well, your attitude regarding those lying, cheating, stealing, etc., will determine your altitude in the blessing. You see, we command the blessing on us, but we are not to have crooked speech. And I command the blessing on something, uh, or, or on myself, but if I am walking in a blessing blocker, it is not going to work. Because to walk in that, you have got to exercise authority. And if God's word isn't number one and carries more weight in your life than anything else, you're not walking in that authority and you won't have it. And we'll get to... Hopefully a scripture on that in a little bit. So it's speaking of our attitudes. He was, Paul said in, a, in, in Romans 12, we have to reprogram our mind, but we are to allow these truths to change our attitude. Change our attitude about things. So we have to ask ourselves, what is our attitude towards anger? towards strife, towards bitterness, towards unforgiveness. What is my attitude towards it? That's what's going to change things. A lot of us have heard biblical truths. We can quote them, just recall them. But they haven't changed their attitudes. People can know it's God's will for them to prosper. They can quote the prosperity scriptures. They can quote, quote, given it's given unto me. They can quote whatever other one you want. Second Corinthians, give, multiplication. But if your attitude towards finances and your attitude towards poverty and your attitude towards not being born with a silver spoon in your mouth If your attitude hasn't changed towards it, you will not walk in the blessing with prosperity. Because you still have that poverty mentality. 
Your mind might know. You might quote it even. But there's no revelation, no attitude change. No attitude change. To me, life doesn't depend on money, and nobody's my source but God. We went through some rough times. My scripture. Didn't matter what we had or what we lost. I've, God said, I've never seen, David said this, not that David, well, he did say it, but got it out of the word. I've never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. And I said, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I am the seed of Abraham. I have the faith of Abraham. And I will never, I will never, I will never need to beg for bread. We never did. Food was multiplied on the table. You have three teenage children. Let me tell you, everybody says boys eat a lot. Well, if you've had a teenage girl, I don't know. Sometimes they can out-eat the boys. Let me tell you. Isn't that right, Aurora? I tell you. Why? I just knew it. I just knew it. My attitude towards it didn't matter. I, I just had such a, an attitude that whether there was money or no money, food or no food, uh, God could bring a raven, I mean, a, 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 whatever those kind of dogs are, St. Bernard could come carrying whatever it was I needed. God would get it to me. And we never went hungry, ever. Never. Well, when you see the size of Brent, you know he was fed well growing up. <laughs> I'm serious. I am so serious about this. Satan has had us bound when we're free people because we've allowed these blessing blockers in our life. Christians sick, not living out their full life. Who wants to live sick? I don't. I'd rather die at 30 than live sick and, and be sick until 60. Jesus paid the price for you to have the blessing on you. He paid it. It's yours. You just have to take it. But Satan will fight you all the time. So we have to meditate on the truths of God's word until our outlook, feelings, sentiments, and dispositions have been renewed to God's way of thinking. And then verse 25 we're taking off, Ephesians 4.25, so then get rid of lies. This is God's word translation. Speak the truth to each other because we are all members of the same body. New Living Translation, verse 26 and 27, and don't sin by letting anger control you. I like that translation. Don't let the sun go down while you're still angry, for anger gives a mighty foothold to the devil. And you want to know something? I've been around angry people. We all probably have. But anger, what causes anger? Because somebody, if you get angry at me, why are you angry at me? Because I didn't do something you wanted me to do, or I didn't do it the way you wanted it done. Selfish. Selfish selfish I used to uh, tell David when I first read that it said don't let the sun go down on your wrath so we'd get in a discussion I'd say well if I get angry I can be angry until the sun goes down <laughs> most stupid statement one of the most stupid statements I've ever made excuse me now I said that in jest but those words were out of my mouth ignorance gone to seed Glory to God, I'm glad someone's listening. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Anger is a rough thing. Not so even so much for the person that it's throwing at. Because when you know the blessing and you've got your shield of faith up and you know who you are in Christ, but it will cause heart problems. It will cause ulcers. It will cause digestive problems. 
Anger is a vicious thing, really bad. It'll kill you. Not a good thing. Verse 29, don't say anything that would hurt another person. Instead, speak only what is good so that you can give help wherever it is needed. That way, what you say will help those who hear. 30, don't give the Holy Spirit any reason to be upset with you. He has put his seal on you for the day you will be set free from the world of sin. Listen, what causes the Holy Spirit to be upset with you? Anger, strife, bitterness, lying, all these blessing blockers. What comes out of your mouth is what causes the Holy Spirit to be upset. Or the other translation says to grieve the Holy Spirit. 31, get rid of your bitterness, hot tempers, anger, loud quarreling, cursing, and hatred. Be kind to one another, sympathetic, forgiving each other as God has forgiven you through Christ. Ephesians 5, 2, imitate God. Remember, we started off with the blessed one made in his image and likeness. Where would we be if God lost his temper with us? Where would we be if God started speaking curses over us? We're to imitate God as dear children. I want us to look at Mark 4. I said it's the amount of weight the word of God carries in your life that will then change the spirit of your mind. Ephesians 5.11 says, Have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness. Check the works of darkness. Are you having fellowship with them? Then don't. And blessing blockers are works of darkness. Ephesians 4.22 Ephesians 4, 22. Ah, I apologize. Mark. Yes, indeed, Mark. I hope you're still there and didn't change. Thank you. Mark. No, yes, Mark. <laughs> Glory to God. Well, let's do 21. Let's move up one. And he said unto them, is a candle brought to be put under a bushel or hid under a bed and not to be set on a candlestick? The word of God, it's a light unto our path. Is it to be hidden? Verse 22, for there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested. Let me tell you, nothing, good or bad, good or bad. When enough pressures come on you, what's in there will come out, good or bad, good or bad. For there is nothing hid which shall not be manifested, neither was anything kept secret, but it should come abroad. So the word of God will be light you, will give, bring you light. Verse 23. This is the amount of weight you put on the word of God. How valuable is the word of God to you? How much does it mean to you? Are you submitted to the word of God? If any man have ears to hear, let him hear. It's a decision you make. I am going to hear the word of God. I am going to hear. You're the one that makes that decision. You're the one that makes the decision if the spirit of your mind, your attitude is going to be changed. And it starts with your attitude toward the word of God. Verse 24, and he said unto them, take heed. Pay attention, listen up. Smarten up. Take your tongue out, slap it if necessary, clean out your ears, take heed, pay attention to what you hear. What are you listening to? Self? What are you listening to? With what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you. The amount of revelation knowledge, the amount of the blessing that you're going to walk in, who decides that amount? You do. I do. We do ourselves. It's not, oh, God, 
I know now you've blessed me, so, so somehow, some way, by some hook or some crook, do something here. No, no, he's done it. And we decide the measure or the quantity or the amount we walk in. Isn't that wonderful? Because nobody else can stop the blessing operating in my life. Nobody. Nobody can stop me walking in divine health. Nobody. There's only one person that can stop me from walking in divine health, and that's me, myself, and I. Well, I guess that's three people. Nobody else. Nobody else. Nobody else can stop me unless I allow them. So I decide the measure of the blessing I'm going to walk in. I decide the measure of of health and healing and wholeness and prosperity, soundness of mind that I'm going to walk in. For what measure you meet, it shall be measured to you. And unto you that hear shall more be given. For he that hath, hath what? Ears to hear. You that have the attitude that I am going to hear this and nothing was hidden and the word of God is revealed to me in Jesus' name and with the right attitude, I put the right amount of weight on this word that I'm receiving. It is top priority in my life. The blessing and how to walk in a top priority. These blessing blockers, the word of God says not to do those. It has top priority in my life. It carries more weight than the weight of it. Any the word of any man it carries more weight than the money it carries more weight than anything else and it'll change your life forever it'll take out bitterness and strife and division and selfishness and judging and lying and we might stumble and fall but we're quick quick Quick, be quick to repent. I have to be quick because I want to continue walking in divine health every day of my life. I have no choice. I'm not going to leave it until the sun goes down. For he that hath ears to hear, to him shall be given. But he that hath not... He that doesn't have ears to hear. He that's not submitted to the word of God. He that gets into these blessing blockers. What you have will be taken away from you. God's not taking it away. Satan comes immediately to steal the word. And if you don't have ears to hear and you don't put the word to practice and it's falling there, Satan will come and see to it that you are offended and he will steal that word out of your heart. As fast as you can blink. So he that hath not ears to hear. Because you want to hear. Whatever pride might want you to hear. You want to just hear things that feel good. If you want a feel good sermon to make you feel good. And walk out of here where you don't have to do any changing. This is not the place for you. We are going forward in the power of God, walking in divine health, the blessing activated in our life, and the end time harvest of money is coming in, and we are going to complete everything God's called us to do. Amen? Everything. And we're not going to allow these blessing blockers in our life. And we're not going to allow it in our body. And if somebody comes up to you with with whatever they might do and it's a blessing blocker, you say, excuse me, can I pray with you? Oh, oh, oh my, my, my. You've got a problem with Lanny? Come, come with me. First let's pray and then we will approach Lanny and talk to her. amazing how that works hallelujah glory to god this is what jesus died for this is what that's all part of the curse that he took our attitude what value have you placed on the word whatever amount of measure and value you've put on the word is what you are going to have in your life be renewed in the spirit of your mind and it takes a decision takes a decision. Hallelujah.
glory to God, and Jesus paid the price. Isn't that wonderful? He paid the price. And we have the Holy Spirit to help us, to walk in that victory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. No excuses. We will not offer excuses. Just because I'm walking by and Ben tripped me up is no reason I'm going to go and trip somebody else up. There's no reason I'm going to go and tell Peter what a jerk Ben is because he tripped me up. I'm not going to do it. Amen. Nobody, zero, nobody can make you do anything you haven't decided to do. Isn't that wonderful? Hallelujah. Please stand. Hallelujah.